What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be replacing your engine oil cooler, all right? Which is the oil filter housing and engine oil cooler. This is what it looks like, okay? Check that out. Now, most of the time, let me see, yeah, let's flip it over. These gaskets right here, they wear out and they start leaking. It could be oil or it could be coolant, okay? And they will leak into your system. Now, the problem we had is that every so often we had to fill this up because it kept on, you know, <laughs> going down, of course. Now, you may have another problem where oil gets in the coolant right here. So if you're watching because of that, uh, you're gonna have this all milky and it's gonna look like your engine's blown, but it's really not, all right? Because as long as uh, coolant gets into, gets in, I'm sorry, oil gets into the coolant, it's okay. But if coolant gets into the oil, that's where you're wrong, okay? So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. So just bear with me. I'm going to do my best to keep it as short and simple as possible. Just thank you for listening to the intro. All right. So here we go. This specific vehicle that we have right here is a 2012 Dodge Charger with a 3.6 liter engine. Now, this fix also applies to any Dodge Chrysler G product. So it could be a Chrysler, what, 300 with the V6. It could be a Dodge Charger. It could be uh jeep liberty or whatever you know chrysler 200 limited it doesn't matter as long as it has the 3.6 engine from uh dodge you should be able to use the same procedure to make this happen okay so stay tuned here we go step number one disconnect the battery as you know the battery is located in the trunk you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet loosen it up real quick and remove the negative battery terminal all right once your ground is off be sure to get something to cover right here you don't want your trunk closing and then you're not going to be able to get to the back unless you claw through the seats you know so uh here we go all right guys the step number one we're gonna have to remove the um air intake assembly right here so we need to loosen up this clamp number one right here get a flathead screwdriver and loosen this up and another one right here with the throttle body all right so once you loosen that up you should be able to pull this one out of there and then pull this one out of here be sure to unplug uh, any of the sensors that are around here i will show you right now Okay, this is the air assembly. There's a sensor right here. Then you're gonna push on this tab and then pull it back, just like that, okay? Now, you're free to remove it. So, put it somewhere safe where you won't lose it and it won't get damaged. Now we have exposed. Hey, we're practically there, right? <laughs> All right, now would be a good time if you have any air compressor tool or anything like that to blow any dirt or any debris that you see around here to prevent anything from getting in there. And uh, we can go ahead and cover that throttle body up as well. We can probably put a small rag or paper towel or something, shop rag. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna blow some compressed air and clean this up real quick as best as we can so we can move forward, all right? Stay tuned. All right, guys, sorry if, if the rain is too loud, but here we go. Our next step is to go around the entire intake manifold and make sure that there's nothing attached to it. For example, things like this. All right, we need to make sure that this gets, that this clip gets taken off of here. Just like that, all right. There we go, it just clips on, so you just pull that out. And then we go around the manifold to make sure that there's nothing stuck to it, okay? So let's see. These wires for the throttle body are gonna have to come off. So make sure that there's a little clip right there. Pull that tab, pull this, get it from here. All right, now, same thing here. Just like that, disconnect this sensor and move this wire out of the way. All right, so you can see how it's all starting to come out. The vacuum hose is right here. Pull and move the hose right here. I'm gonna have to do the same thing. Um, So as we can wiggle it, you may have to get some pliers or something and move it around and pull it back. Now we have that next one in the back. 
You're gonna have to undo that clamp and pull it out of there. And it looks like that's about it. That's holding it in place. So I'm gonna remove those and uh, we'll move forward. Here we go. Okay, to remove hose clamps the easy way, you're probably gonna need a, a, a tool set like this. Now this, uh, I think it was under $100 on Amazon. You need this one right here. This is like a clamp compression tool. You don't have to buy it, but it just makes it a lot easier. We work on cars a lot, so we use this, okay? Um, this is what I'm using. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on there and show you right now. This is how it works. You clamp it, and then it tightens it up, and it removes that clamp for you, just like that. All right, that's how we remove in the back one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once you have removed everything from around the intake manifold, you will need to remove seven of these screws. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna see, yeah. So here we go, I'm gonna count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there's a seventh one right there. All right. Now this takes an eight millimeter. I am using my very thin quarter inch ratchet and extension in that long socket so I can get to them with ease. We're gonna loosen all those up and then the manifolds should be ready to come out. Okay, here we go. All right, now with the screws loose, this should just be free and ready to go. So let's hope there's nothing else holding it in place. We're gonna pick this up and move out of the way. There must be a sensor or something connected. Nope. And just like that, guys, check it out. That's how you remove the intake manifold. Okay, let me put it upside down here somewhere. We're gonna get this cleaned up real well. And uh, let me see. Now we have exposed our engine right here. We need to remove this to get to the oil cooler. And that's gonna be our next step. All right. All right, so our next step is to remove the um, this thing right here, the, the fuel filter rails, and we need to unplug all of the fuel injectors which needs you need to pull this red tab up push on this pin and then pull back just like that repeat the same process for all of them now this one may be pressurized so be careful make sure you have some glasses on or something so you don't get fuel in your eyes but you have to push this thing in press the green tab and then pull out just like that okay now once all these are done we're going to move on to removing these screws right here and there's a total of one two three four five six seven i think so we'll fast forward and get that out the way. All right, guys. So once you have removed, uh, I'm sorry, once you have loosened up your screws, like I said, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one right here in the back, eight. And you have taken this off, all right? This should be free and clear to come out. So you just grab your full fuel rail and be careful that nothing falls into your cylinders. Lift up and then pull it out of the way, just like that. We're gonna move it to the side and we're gonna get this cleaned up real well to make sure it's all nice and clean because we're gonna replace these gaskets right here, okay? And there you go, guys. You have exposed your oil cooler. Now we have to unplug all the sensors. This is a red tab. You pull up on the red tab, push down on the sensor. Make sure you pull up on the tab, push down on the sensor, pull it back just like that. Same thing with this bottom one, all right? I'm gonna probably need both hands to do this one, but you're gonna have to push in. I mean, yeah, push in a little bit, push the tab and then pull back, okay? And then once you do that, we'll be able to lift this up and remove the hoses in the back. All right, guys, now with your uh, fuel rails removed, we went ahead and cleaned up all the way around right here. And now it's time to remove the actual oil cooler and you're gonna have, let um, me see, one, two, three, four, one two three four five bolts which is going to be this one right here one two three uh four and five right here we'll be able to lift this up and then take the hoses from the back okay because it's kind of a pain in the butt so here we go guys oh the size on those if you notice they're like stars i'm going to tell you right now all right for these bolts you're going to need an e8 socket which is the inverted star and if you can see right there e8 and uh, we're gonna start by loosening them up just like that okay loosen these up first they're not gonna be extremely tight and then finish taking them up and 
we should be able to make it work. Here we go. Thank you. All right, once all them screws are done, you just gotta wiggle it around. You may have to go back and forth like that. And then it's gonna come out just like that. We're gonna go ahead and suck all that water up, blow it out of there, make sure everything is clean. And we're gonna remove that hose from the back, take that clamp off. All right, so here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, so once you have that, make sure you clean that up real good. It's, it's most likely gonna be wet, so try to soak up all that, um, you know, all the water that's in there and oil mixtures, so be careful. And make sure you clean everything up right here. Make sure you remove the old gaskets and clean everything up so when the new one sits in, it's gonna sit nice and clean. All right, so there's that one. We're gonna go ahead and clean the rest of the things up and make sure everything is good to put it back together, okay? Here we go. All right, guys, here we go. It's time to put it back in. So I'm gonna need both hands for this, but I got my clamp right there. We're gonna put that hose in first and then we're gonna set it in place and connect the sensors, okay? That's how I'm gonna do it. You can do it whatever order you want. You can connect the sensors if you want first and then do the rest, all right? So that's what I'm doing now. Oh, I've already cleaned up the edges right there for the gaskets to sit on real clean. I did it as best as I could. So if there's a little spig right here, move that the way, you see, I've cleaned that as best as I could. So here we go. All right, guys, now with your hose plugged in in the back and your sensors, plugged in back here we are able to go ahead and and screw it in remember they don't have to be you don't have to tighten them up way too much okay so be careful right here because it was kind of easy to take out this doesn't have to be extremely tight you can feel free to go online and look at the uh, specifications as far as torque goes and then uh, let me know okay all right guys now it's time to remove the old gaskets all right remove the old gaskets and put the new ones in so just like this, take this one off, make sure you discard them. And here's the new ones right here. So we gotta make sure that they're oiled up real nice and that they go in well, okay? So once all those are done, replace all these and we can get to put this part, the fuel rail, back on top of that. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once you have removed your um, gaskets and installed the new ones, it's time to go ahead and remove these right here. Of course, still, you gotta, gotta be careful, nothing falls in there, all right? Something falls in here and um, you're pretty much done. You're gonna have to take everything apart. <laughs> all right, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and flip this back and put it back where it belongs, all right? If you wanna go ahead and give it a double check, make sure that there's nothing right there, you should be all right. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna flip this over and put it back, okay? Here we go. All right, guys, now our next step is gonna be to go ahead and, and start these up and tighten them down i'm using just a tiny screwdriver just to get them started but of course remember to use your um eight millimeter i think it was and we're gonna go ahead and tighten these up you can feel free to google the sequence because i'm not gonna do that all right so i'm gonna let you do that google the specifications and google the sequence on how to turn this up because i'm not gonna do that for you all right but i'm gonna show you how to do everything else so you're gonna have to do a little bit of homework yourself all right now, after that is said and done, we're gonna tighten everything down and then we're gonna remove these gaskets right here, uh, put some rags in here, get this cleaned up real well again and install the new ones. I know we should have done this when this was out, but whatever, I'm recording, all right? So we're gonna clean these up, put the new gaskets on, make sure they're nice and clean too, and then we're gonna top it off with the manifold. All right, here we go. All right, guys, so once that's clean, it's time to, like I said earlier, remove the gaskets, the old ones, and it's time to put the new gaskets in. All right, make sure that they fit in nice and snug, okay, that it doesn't get stuck or anything like that. So yeah. Now repeat the same procedure with all of them real quick, and let's move forward. Once your gaskets are installed nice and snug, it's time to make sure that you clean the mating surfaces on the uh, intake manifold, which we've already done so right here. We've done our, the best we can. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this over and put it back on top, all right? So go ahead and stay tuned, here we go. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and install this, put it back together. The first thing we need to do is just gotta make sure that you line this up right here. Oh, actually, I take that back. Don't forget this. Put your heat shield back where you got it from, all right? 
because that protects your wiring and everything. And now you can put this back and make sure everything's out of the way. Line up the bolts down here and you have your guide. The rest should just go ahead and fall into place. All right, you may have to adjust it a little bit, but it's pretty straightforward. So once it's done, it's time to tighten it up and send her home, plug everything back in. There you go, guys, so stay tuned. I'm gonna continue doing the rest, all right? I'm gonna tighten those down, find a sequence if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Here we go. All right, guys, once everything is tightened up, please be sure to put back your sensors, your vacuum hoses, the hose in the back, everything, because that's gonna make a big difference, all right? You don't wanna forget any of that stuff. So make sure you take it slow and go step at a time and double check everything, all right? Now it's time to install the last part right there, which is the remaining, um, remaining part, right? The air intake. We're gonna go ahead and stick this side in first. So let's slide it in just like that. Oh, also, we gotta remember that this, this had a sensor in there, and that's, that's that wire that's loose right there, okay? So just make sure you plug that in. And then this end right here, of course, it just slides in just like that, and then you're almost done, all right? Here we go. All right, guys, just a quick tip. Um, when replacing a engine oil cooler, you wanna make sure that you put a little bit of oil in there as well, okay? Because remember, that pump is dry. Or the cooler is dry whenever you install it so you want to put a little bit of oil down there and then you can go ahead and install your filter all right close this up and now we prefer you do an oil change of course you know but you don't have to it's completely up to you we always recommend it so we get this hand tightened and then we're going to tighten it up just a little bit at the end but yeah um do an oil change guys and then you'll be officially done, all right? So once we're done with the oil change, that is how you officially change your engine oil cooler. Now, of course, there's a procedure that once you're done with that, you have to do a coolant flush, which is remove all the coolant from the radiator, drain it, and then fill it back up through the uh, coolant right there, all right, the reservoir. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with this. Don't forget to put you know the things back where they belong or whatever. So yeah. Hit that like and subscribe. Let's rock and roll. Keep these videos coming, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you fix your own stuff and don't spend that much money at the shop. All right? Thank you so much. Have a good one.